For this lab, we are examining the relationship between predator and prey populations. Predation is the biological interaction in which one organism, the predator, consumes another, the prey. Mathematicians Alfred J. Latka and Vito Volterra independently came up with these two simple differential equations to describe changes in prey population size with regard to changing predator population size, and vice versa. This is known as the Latka Volterra model. As we explore the ecological basis of predator prey relationships, consider the limitations of this model and what assumptions might have been made. A classic example in which this model is applied is the cyclic fluctuations observed in the Canadian lynx and snowshoe hare populations. In North American boreal forests, lynx prey upon hares. Lynx populations tend to rise and fall in response to hare populations. This trend was observed in the 1800s by the tr fur trappers working for Hudson's Bay Company. Here is a chart made from old trading records which track the population sizes for lynx and hare from 1845 to 1935. Note how the peaks in the hare population are followed by peaks in lynx population. When the lynx population reaches a maxima, the hare population seems to experience a population crash. The scientific literature indicates the lynx populations are tightly linked to hare density, but fluctuations in hare population are not as well understood. The cyclic fluctuations occur on about 8 to 11 year cycles, even without the presence of lynx. So these same fluctuations are found on predator-free islands. This suggests there is some other force limiting hare population size other than predation. We can attempt to describe this relationship with the Latka Volterra model. In the first equation, the change in prey population size over time is determined by the addition of individuals given the growth rate and initial prey population size represented by R and P, and the removal of individuals as a function of the attack rate of predators A and the predator population size C, which is also dependent upon the prey population size P. In the second equation, the change in predator population size over time is again dependent upon the predator attack rate and the initial population sizes of the prey and predators. And a new term or variable beta is added and it describes the transfer of energy gained from food to reproduction. And the loss of individuals is represented by the death rate and the initial predator population size, C. Note that the predator and prey population size products are in both equations. This means that these equations are coupled and population size of one will be affected by the other over time. Let's go back to the lynx and hare example. If initial hare population size is large and growth rate R is high, and the first term in the equation exceeds the loss due to predation, then the hare population will experience growth because dp will exceed zero. A large prey density will support enough reproduction in lynx so that their addition of new individuals to the population exceeds death and CDT exceeds zero. This regime is not maintained forever. The increase in lynx population does have a negative feedback on hair population size causing the second term in the hair equation to exceed the first, resulting in population decline. Here, the two populations are out of phase, and eventually, the decline in hair density will cause decline in lynx density because the prey population size will not be large enough to surpass mortality in lynx. From these equations, it is easy to see how predator and prey populations may be tightly linked and fluctuate in cycles. 
While the model seems to accurately describe the lynx hare population dynamics, it is based upon some faulty assumptions, including lack of self-limitation in both the prey and predator populations and no limit on prey consumption per predator, which is known as the functional response. Going back to the latka volterra equations, the numerical response is the change in predator density in response to change in prey density, which we just demonstrated. The functional response is the change in predator consumption rate in response to prey availability. There are three common types of functional responses, and we will examine the first two. In the type one functional response, the number of prey consumed is only described by the attack rate of the predators and the initial prey density, creating a linear function. An example of the type one functional response would be baleen whales feeding on zooplankton. In this scenario, the number of prey consumed linearly depends on how many zooplankton are floating around in the water column. In the type two functional response, time spent searching for and handling prey is included. The ratio of total time to handling time becomes important. Note that handling time doesn't change. At low prey densities, a greater proportion of time is spent searching for prey, so few prey are consumed. At higher prey densities, a greater proportion of time is spent handling prey and more prey are consumed. At a certain point, all of the time is spent handling prey because prey abundance is so high. At this point, handling time limits the number of prey attacked and the response curve reaches an asymptote. The lynx hare predator prey interaction could be an example of type two response. If the hare density is low, lynx will spend more time searching for prey. As the hare density increases, more time will be spent handling, which includes stalking, chasing, capturing, consuming, and digesting the hare. So at a certain level of hare abundance, the predator consumption rate is no longer limited by the availability of prey because all time is spent stalking, chasing, capturing, consuming, and digesting the hares. <laughs>